Thank you, Walt. I, um, I tell everyone at Manchester that I am not going to be a micromanager, but uh, Walt, we can work on that introduction together. So. <laughs> I, am, I am really pleased to be with you here today. This is my first official uh, event as president of Manchester, apart from showing up for work on July 1st, and I'm really glad to be here to spend the time with you. Let me begin with some amazing news that I suspect many of you already know. We concluded our Students First campaign 18 months early and well above our campaign goal of $100 million. We announced last Sunday that we raised over $108 million. Yeah. Remember that total of 108 when I use the word audacious in a few minutes. Joe Switzer deserves our thanks and congratulations. For this, she shepherded the campaign and made the success a reality. In addition to Joe, I'd like to thank Tim McElwee, Vice President for Advancement, his staff, our many volunteers, and especially the donors who helped us reach our goal. In a second, I'm going to ask you to stand if you were among that group that I just named, donors, volunteers, or staff, and I'm going to take your picture. I'm, uh, I'm now on Twitter. You can follow me at MUPresDave, and I'll send this out afterwards. So let me get my camera ready. I've got to get faster at this, obviously. Okay, if you were a donor, a staff person, or a volunteer with our campaign, if you gave to Manchester in any way during this campaign period, please stand or hold your hand up. Thank you very much. And on behalf of our students, the students that benefit directly from that campaign, thank you as well. Being able to drive to conference this year was a real pleasure, in part because Renee and I love to take road trips. Sometimes they're quick. We get in the car and take a wandering afternoon drive. This spring, we took a longer trip. We drove out to Virginia to visit family and to see sites in the Shenandoah Valley. It was a quick out and back, and we spent a lot of time on interstates. Now, when you take a trip, any kind of trip, there are three framing questions that come up. Where are we going? How are we going to get there? And what do we need to make the trip, right? I think that these same three questions frame any trip, regardless of the type. And by the way, there is a fourth set of questions, are we there yet? <laughs> yeah that I'm going to ignore today just like I did when our kids were little. <laughs> so at one end of the travel continuum are just get there or must get there trips. You go the fastest way possible and waste little time. The trip is a means to an end. Our trip to Virginia was like that. At the other extreme are we'll get there when we get there, if we get there, trips. The trip itself is the end. A meandering Sunday drive is a good example of that. You've probably been on each type of trip and had both wonderful and awful experiences. I'll spare you my own worst stories, even though they're often the most fun to tell, but know that they involved blizzards, long rides in cars with cranky people, roads that don't appear on GPS, and an occasional speeding ticket. I can tell you from experience that the difference between wonderful and awful, between forgettable and memorable, is often the spirit or the attitude you have when you travel. So that said, I'd like to add a fourth question to trip planning. What will the trip be like? Now we've been engaged in our latest round of strategic planning at Manchester since last February. And I found that the process is much like planning a trip. The questions are similar, though they are sometimes asked in different ways. For example, one of the questions that I get asked most often is, Dave, what's your vision for Manchester? 
And depending on how it's asked, it could mean either where are we going or how are we going to get there. Today I'm going to skip those questions about destination and I'm going to set aside the road map. You'll hear more about those in the coming year. And instead, try to answer that fourth question. What will the trip be like? To give you a heads up, here's a snapshot answer. Put simply, I want us to travel with a spirit of abundance and gratitude. I want us to travel with a spirit of abundance and gratitude. On a recent vacation, Renee and I were driving to art galleries around Santa Fe, New Mexico. And it turns out that all the really great galleries in Santa Fe are on or at the end of dusty roads. So we found ourselves walking across a dirt-packed parking lot into a glass-blowing studio. When we walked in, my eye was drawn immediately to glass peaches on a shelf. So let me digress a second and tell you that I've commissioned Sean Kirshner to write an anthem for my inauguration on November 7th. And in the search for lyrics for the anthem, I read a lot of poetry. Sean writing that anthem, by the way, is a good enough reason for you to come to the inauguration if you don't need another. <laughs> One poem that I read that stuck in my mind is called From Blossoms by a Pennsylvania poet named Lee Young Lee, and it's about peaches. So here's the second stanza. Let me read it to you. From laden boughs, from hands, from sweet fellowship in the bins, comes nectar at the roadside. Succulent peaches we devour, dusty skin and all. Comes the familiar dust of summer, dust we eat. Now this may sound like a stretch, but those glass peaches at the studio reminded me of this poem and this poem reminded me of Manchester. For me, the experience of Manchester, the essence of Manchester, is captured in this stanza. Laden boughs, rich with opportunity. Hands working to bring promise and possibility to fruition. A labor of love made sweeter by sharing with others. I love the imagery of sweet fellowship in the bins. It makes you wonder what they're doing in there, right? <laughs> That's us, sweet fellowship in the bins. Finding food for the body and the soul while we travel together. Doing honest, earthy, unpretentious work, dusty skin and all. So I bought two of the peaches. The artist said they should be bought in pairs and placed so that they talk to each other, and I brought them with me today. These are they. And they talk to each other by being placed with their stems like this, okay? He said they should talk to each other. <laughs> so you'll find abundance and gratitude, the spirit of Lee Young Lee's poem, reflected in the three words and phrases that I use to describe the ways in which we will navigate Manchester's future, the spirit that I talked about early, earlier with which we will travel. The three words I use to describe that journey spirit are aspire, engage, and thrive. By aspire I mean, I mean be audacious. By engage, serve well. And by thrive, I want us to advance our mission. Being audacious means being bold, confident, and visionary. It means standing with your head up, your shoulders back, and your chest out. It means taking risks, building on momentum, and making difficult choices. Serving well includes serving students, the communities in which we live, and the world at large. It means being mission-centered and market smart. It means working together, making important contributions, and transforming lives. Advancing our mission means moving from operating with a thin margin to abundance. In gardening terms, if any of you are gardeners, it means planting, cultivating, feeding, loosening, pruning, creating space to grow. It means building on who we are at our core. The good news for Manchester is that we have experience with each of these. We have a tradition of audacity 
We created the nation's first peace studies program and launched one of the earliest environmental studies programs in the country. I want to share a piece of insider news with you now. This is not public, but will be shortly. We are just $100,000 away from fully funding our peace studies, Gladys Muir Peace Studies professorship, professorship at Manchester. Our goal is a million five. We recently took a, a million dollars from uh, accrued interest from the Plowshares grant, added it to $400,000 raised, and put us within $100,000 of our goal. Unlike insider trading information, though, this is something that you can use and act on immediately to help us close that. <laughs> in other strokes of audacity, we started a college of pharmacy on a new campus in Fort Wayne, 40 miles away from North Manchester, and we earned $35 million in support from the Lilly Endowment to make that happen. Maybe you've heard me tell the story about how we came to ask for $35 million. They told us to be bold. Joe Switzer came up with that number. I thought maybe 25 million. She said 35 million, and I left her offer, office thinking she was crazy. In fact, she was audacious. We raised over $108 million toward an almost unimaginable goal of $100 million 18 months early. All of these initiatives involved risk. All of them involved difficult choices and all of them were audacious. We are perhaps best known for the second word of the journey, spirit of the journey, service, both institutional and individual. Our students and staff and faculty last year volunteered over 40,000 hours of service, placing us on President Obama's Higher Education Community Service Honor Roll. Student groups spend January sessions and spring breaks actively engaged in community service. They go to Jamaica. They work on Habitat for Humanity projects. Service is an integral part of our new pharmacy curriculum. Twice a year, we celebrate days of service where students report on and reflect on service work that they've done throughout the year. And the list of Manchester graduates who have changed the world through their individual service is too long to even begin to recite. And finally, we're called to advance our mission. We've been building on a strong foundation now for 125 years. Todd Eastus, Todd, you're over here, yeah? Uh, joked during baccalaureate this year that I would need to find a new tagline uh, because Joe Switzer had used over and over the, the phrase ability and conviction. That we need to find something new for me to say because she had said that so much. Students have come to associate that phrase with Joe, but it's at the heart of our mission statement. And Todd, I'm sorry, it will become my mantra as well. <laughs> Manchester is an amazing place, and I'm proud to be its 15th president. We are well positioned for the future. We have a 125-year history that provides meeting, meaning, also a lot of meetings, <laughs> a solid mission to build on, an extraordinary momentum for the journey ahead. We have the opportunity to live into the audacity of our mission, to walk the talk of that mission, and to advance the institution that's been entrusted to us. I want to end by reading the full text of Lee Young Lee's poem, From Blossoms. From Blossoms comes this brown paper bag of peaches we bought from the boy at the bend in the road where we turned toward signs painted peaches. From laden boughs, from hands, from sweet fellowship in the bins, comes nectar at the roadside. Succulent peaches we devour, dusty skin and all. Comes the familiar dust of summer, dust we eat. Oh, to take what we love inside, to carry within us an orchard, to eat not only the skin, but the shade, not only the sugar, but the days, to hold the fruit in our hand, adore it, and then bite into the round jubilance of peach. There are days we live as if death were nowhere in the background, from joy to joy to joy, from wing to wing, from blossom to blossom, to impossible blossom, to sweet, impossible blossom. 
As we move Manchester University forward together, I want us to travel with a spirit of abundance and joy and gratitude, with dust on our hands and juice running down our chins, from joy to joy to joy, from wing to wing, from blossom to blossom to impossible blossom to sweet impossible blossom. Thank you for all that you have given to Manchester. Because of your giving in its many forms, we are able to aspire, engage, and thrive, and to transform the world. Thank you.